You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 5. I just, I don't know. I mean, I, I just can't get over that it's supposedly going to be that bad. An end to an energy contract means electric rates are going to spike in one central Illinois city. Good evening, I'm Jennifer Roscoe. Starting in December, people in Urbana will see their four cent rate jump to 12 cents. And before you think that's just changed, those cents will add up to some big dollars. WCI3's Ariana Williams is live in our newsroom. Ariana, do the math for us. What are homeowners looking at? So there are small numbers that can make a big difference. A rate change of this size can increase your overall bill by at least 50% a month. So a monthly bill of $97 will be closer to $150. This is because a 2020 home fill contract guaranteed the low prices for the city, but that contract ends with the November, December meter readings. I spoke with an urban homeowner who says she doesn't know how people are expected to budget for this increase. My power bills are already horrendous, and so that's going to make it unbelievable high. And I've replaced windows, replaced furnaces, and nothing seems to help, except maybe the fireplace, but we get down to it. Urbana will move to Amarin's 12.23 rate until this new contract. That will go down slightly to 12.21 when the Energy Harbor contract starts in February. You can calculate a rough estimate of your new electric charge by using your previous bill. Just multiply your monthly charge by 0.12% and then add that to your overall gas and that will give you a brand new monthly bill. Live in the newsroom, Ariana Williams with WCIA3. All right, Ariana, thank you. Thousands are coming to the U of I campus this weekend, ready for Dad's Weekend in Illini football. But you should be prepared for the high winds that are coming with it. WCI3's Amanda Brennan is live at Memorial Stadium. And Amanda, uh, we can already see your wind, or your hair blowing in the wind. What, uh, what are we expecting? Well, Jennifer, like you said, it's windy now and it's only going to get worse tomorrow. I talked to Kevin and he says that they're going to double in speed by game time. Now, if you're a tailgater and you're setting up tents, playing bags, grilling and all this whole area around me here at Memorial Stadium, one official with Illini Athletics says you may want to rethink setting up that 10 by 10 tent. Now, this comes after Purdue University, about an hour and a half away from here, banned tents at their 11 a.m. game tomorrow. But here at Illinois, the assistant director for event management management says they don't plan on doing that. He says they'll continue to monitor the winds, but it's most important that people take precautions. We just want to make sure our fan base knows that coming in tomorrow for the tailgaters, a lot of tents, those 10 by 10 tents, if we're looking at gusts of 50 miles per hour, you know, we just need to make sure they got to be aware and take those precautions to make sure they're anchoring them down. Or quite honestly, if the weather's clear and the rain's out of there, it might be best just to keep those 10 by 10s stored away until next weekend. And he says if you don't have the correct anchors for your tents, don't put them up. The Illini kickoff versus Michigan State at 2.30 p.m. and they're expecting nearly a sellout crowd, one of the largest in years. Now, what about these large white tents that you see behind me here in Grange Grove at Memorial Stadium? Tonight at 6, we talk to the company that supplies them, and we learn if they're concerned or not for tomorrow's weather. Reporting live at Memorial Stadium, Amanda Brennan, WCIA3, your local news leader. Amanda, thank you so much. Now, with thousands more fans expected than usual for an Illini football game, there are new precautions you're going to see out there. One of the U of I officers in charge of football security says they start preparing the night before. Then they start monitoring and directing traffic and parking areas eight hours before kickoff. He says because of this weekend's large crowds, they'll staff intersections they haven't in the past. We'll have officers staffed all the way from um, Lincoln University and one way uh, to out to Windsor Road, maybe up to Curtis. We also encourage patrons to take some of the shuttles MTD runs because then they can be able to avoid some of the traffic headache after the game and get back to their car that may be out of the normal flow of traffic. He says they'll make staffing adjustments before and after the game based on where problems come up. He wants to remind fans be patient while driving, parking and waiting in line at the game. We have a news update for you. The last suspect in the deadly shooting of Arian McLennan has been arrested. 
The crime happened in August near the intersection of Oak Street and Oakland Avenue, excuse me, Wood Street and Oakland Avenue in Decatur. Police say 18-year-old Amari Walker was arrested in Indianapolis after two months on the run. Deontay Robinson and Kyle Esco had already been arrested. Here are some stories making national headlines today. A new report from the Labor Department shows employers added 261,000 jobs in October. Historically, it's a healthy number, but down from the average of 381,000 jobs over the previous three months. The unemployment rate ticked up to 3.7 percent from 3.5 in September. With the holiday season on the way, many companies are planning to hire seasonal workers. Twitter started a mass layoff today, just a week after Elon Musk took over. Musk is overhauling the company and is looking to cut costs after last week's $44 billion buyout. He had previously indicated plans to cut at least half of Twitter's 7,500 workers. Those workers filed a class action lawsuit saying his move violated the law requiring a company to give notice before mass layoffs. One town in central Illinois is getting a fully staffed ambulance service. How much time this could save if there's an emergency? And this. It's just as addicting as any other substance. It's talking about alcohol. Why the CDC says a wide range of wide range of deaths can be linked to drinking.